Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake. Myself, Jake Storielli, producer, Big Baby David. Happy April 15th tax day for those of you that haven't gotten it done. I think you still can. No idea. I'm part of married crew, which means my wife kind of did it. Which, I don't know, equal part exciting and a little nervous. Because that comes back, that's a fight. Anyways, hope you did your taxes. Big baseball weekend. Uh, man, series in Baltimore really got me going. I think we're going to do a quick around the league. Uh, you guys know when it's time to talk ball, I want to cover as much as I can. I do have two teams that have really impressed me that I think I'm elevating to kind of serious... I don't know about World Series contender, because still the big boys are up there, but we got to take them more serious for the 24 season. And two teams I'm really down on. It's April 15th. That can be tough, and that can change with one series, and I hope these teams too, so take it that way. Uh, and I got to watch a lot of ball this weekend, especially with the Yankees getting rained out. On Friday, I was able to watch a ton of games around the league. I keep saying this, and I keep hyping it up for baseball fans. Uh, MLB Network has a new channel. I don't think they do it every night. Um, mine is right under the normal MLB Network channel. Uh, and it was a whip-around show that showed all the games around the league, and it was cutting to big moments and everything. It was awesome. They have another one they do that they kind of just put up like a quad box with four different games. And I don't love that version of it. I've come across the quad box, and it's got it's just a little hectic for me. It's a step away. It's, yeah, you know, I the the beauty of NFL Red Zone when it's when it's right is that they're cutting in and out, and here's the two box, here's the octo box, like they they use it for the moment where the other one just kind of kind of sits there a little bit. Um, that it was really good. I think I think Scooter Braun was a part of it. I. You know, he wasn't getting in the mix uh, a ton, but it was a really good product, so I got to see a lot of ball, which really excited me. And MLB Network Strike Zone. Uh, so if you see that, if you get that with your package or whatever, I would give that a look because it's a good way to play ball. So we'll do a little bit of that. Maybe we'll end uh, with some NBA playoffs and maybe a little Masters talk. Scheffler, my goodness. Um, and with all of that, you might have seen the big announcement today. Uh, that we are now partners with Dan Patrick. So, I mean, in the Hall of Fame, still building his Hall of Fame mm. resume. Uh, yeah, they they reached out. They were kind of doing a submission thing. I think there's over like 200 different people or companies they were looking at, uh, and they ended up wanting to work with us. So, Awake and Jake will now be a part of the Dan Patrick Network, along with Jimmy's Three Things. Uh, and we're excited to be with them. I, I think I'll... There might be a couple appearances with them. I think they'll be sending a couple people this way, and I don't know. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's exciting. And if you're viewing and thinking anything really changes on your end, not really. It's still, it should be same podcast link you've, you're used to. If that's where you listen, YouTube's the same. Just you might be getting access to more guests, or you might see Jimmy and Jake in different places sometimes as guests other places. That was the best part of the partnership. Not much is changing on our end. We just got more friends. Uh, so, with that, I'll do uh, my little jaunt around the league that I saw this weekend. Again, Saturday, just a sports... I was going to say sports -o, Like, that's a name for a sports person. Uh, but it kind of was a sports paradise, man. Uh, again, Friday night, Yankees get rained out. I was like, what should I do? Should I do something that's not... Baseball, but that's for later in the year. That's like, you know, when dog days roll around, if I get an off day, then it's like, hey, go see this movie everyone saw. No, I'm I'm in baseball mode, baby. Uh, so Friday night, buckled in, uh, got to see a lot of teams around the league. Baltimore-Milwaukee was a fun series all weekend. It was one of my favorite talking points uh, from talking baseball today. Uh, the Brewers went in there just with piss and vinegar and rolled them the first night on Jackson Holiday's uh, first home game. They gave away Jackson Holiday t-shirts. They rolled them so bad, they changed the energy in the building, which is always just one of those funny things to see in sports. Like, seeing 40,000 people kind of have a bad time, uh, it was a powerful message from the Brewers. 
Uh, and then they came back against the Orioles, and they're just giving these crazy at-bats. Um, everyone that the Orioles fought, and they came back on the Brewers on that third game, and it was kind of both teams were playing Baltimore-style baseball. And if you've been listening to this, you know how much I've fallen in love with the Orioles and how deep their lineup is and the fact that they do not give at-bats away. And the fact that Brewers are doing that, uh, that's some impactful stuff. Uh, other things I saw from around the league uh, on the Friday night action, uh, Rocks gave it to the Jays. Um, Kevin Gossman. I don't know. Whatever your Blue Jays' expectations are, Kevin Gossman should and has been a big part of that. His past two starts, he's gotten rocked, and his velo was down, which in the age of MLB pitching and elbow injuries, which is still the biggest conversation in baseball, Tyler Glass now getting interviewed Sunday Night Baseball talking about the elbow. David Cohn, our friend, uh, talking about it. That's uh, That's got to be nervous. Like, if you're the Blue Jays, if we were talking about the Blue Jays and them having a big season, I think one of the thi- one of the boxes you would check again would be Kevin Gossman being at least a stabilizing force on that team. You know, I'm not saying he has to be top five in Cy Young votes, but Kevin Gossman has thrown a lot of innings. Um, you know, even if he has a down year for Toronto, he could still chew up 190 innings, 200 innings. Right now, he is getting hit hard so that could change your Blue Jays expectations uh Braves and Max Freed this was a big bounce back for Max Freed who had had a couple ugly starts to start the season uh he goes 6.1 one earned run I believe good to get him back on track contract year was against the Marlins and they might be uh the best dose of medicine for any pitcher right now my Reds went off um Ellie De La Cruz is, like, going. The slugging is in the sixes. One of my asks before the season is that one of those cruises from the NL Central, like, becomes the star they can. Uh, Ellie's on a path. We'll have to check on O'Neal. Get BBD on that. I'll the, check. Although the Pirates have been rolling. And then this, this is the only one that the note really changed from Friday over the weekend. The Rangers went into Houston... What's O'Neal doing? Uh, the slash line's 249, 279, 400. It's a 679 OPS. Not there yet. Still Not early. there yet. He's picking it. The Texas Rangers came out and did what they've done to Houston a lot of times now. Uh, they rolled up on them. They were up 7-1. They were then up 11-3. Uh, or excuse me, 12-3, to three, that they just offense them to de- death. They hit Jordan late in that game, uh, and I think it might have been his second hit by pitch. Yeah, two. He got hit by Dunning and Burke. And it was one of those, again, talking about the energy in the arena, Jeff Bagwell was on the call for Houston. Hey, Jeff. Um, and they just missed Jordan with a pitch, and he goes, get Jordan out of the game. Like, I don't. Nobody needs this. And he was kind of pointing at Texas, like, if they're going to do this, this is just dumb. They hit him with the next pitch. Things are pretty tense. Kyle Tucker homers right after and gives a little bat flip to show the pitcher, like, hey, we don't do that. I know it was kind of an accident, but if you're going to pitch in to Jordan, you can't hit him. Uh, That may have changed the tone of the weekend because Houston, they put up a five spot that inning. Fortunately, it was already 12-3, to three, so the game was kind of out of reach. Although Texas had to use some of their good bullpen, which changes the formula over the weekend. Houston bounced back. They won two games at home over Texas. They were tied late in that second game. Uh, maybe those are the wins to get them back on track because the record's still not pretty. 6-11. Uh, and 11. No one's out on Houston. Justin Verlander hasn't come back yet. They deserve every ounce of rope. Like, if you're... Don't be the person that's trying to be like, oh, I had it first. I didn't think Houston would be good in April. I don't care. You don't know. They've been to seven straight ALCSs. They are not dead until they are dead. And I don't even know what that would mean. Selling at the trade deadline? Even then, I don't... If they're close to a wild card, which they're probably... 
like even in their worst, worst case, the Yankees had a season from hell last year with a bad team, and they were in the wild card till like mid-August. So with the expanded wild card, don't be Astros or dead person because they're not, uh, and they won't be. Uh, let's see, what was the late night slate? Oh, Padres, Dodgers had a fun weekend at the ballpark. The the thing I'm trying mm. to drive home, I don't know. I can't give the Padres too, too much credit. I mean, they are 500. You really want to see them get five or ten games up before you buy into the Padres, especially with what happened last year. People are saying the culture's changed. Buster only was reporting. And they were talking during the broadcast about the Padres locker room last year. And the way that everybody talks about it, it sounds like there's industry stuff that was going on. There was stuff going on in that locker room that was problematic. And I don't know if it was... I doubt it was Bob Melvin being problematic. That's not his MO. Uh, But maybe something with his managerial style or something with the players that... I don't know. It just didn't come together last year for San Diego. And maybe it's none of that. Maybe it's how bad their record was in extra inning games last year and in one-run games. Two things that are kind of fluky in baseball. Like, they've been proven to be kind of fluky. Like, yes, if you're a good team, in theory, you should be a little better at those. If you're a bad team, you should be a little worse at those. But otherwise, year over year, one-run games, extra innings are fluky, and the Padres were awful at them last year. They've had... An interesting schedule, because they were in the Korea series. So I guess that's where my caveat comes in. The Padres are 9-9, nine and nine, but they have played five of their games against the Dodgers. So the fact that they can get a chunk of those out of the way and done with, saying that, they have a road trip with the Brew Crew coming up. I don't know. I, I think... I think the Padres feel different this year. Their starting pitching jumps off the page. They put up a hodgepodge bullpen that let's see how that works throughout the year. The biggest game changer for me, Jackson Merrill. Man, uh, there's been a lot of hype about the three kids that are playing at the major league level, all named Jackson, all 20 years old. Although, if I read this correctly, BBD, Jackson Merrill turns 21 on 419. So we've only got, mm. we only have four more days of Jackson Merrill being 20 years old. Um, Jackson Merrill's stats on the year hmm. 333 batting average, 419 on base percentage, and 845 OPS. And he made one of the highlights of the early season diving on a ball in the gap, on the warning track, uh, in that first game. He also has three stolen bases. Excuse me, he has two stolen bases. I was reading Tyler Wade's three stolen bases, my doppelganger. Jackson Merrill, for me, that's something you circle and you say that's massively different. That is a lefty bat, which the Padres needed. With the potential to play a high-level center field. He's young. He was a shortstop. But, again, often these guys start there and then move where they're needed at the major league level. Jackson Merrill right now is needed at center field. He made one nice play out there. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some growing pains of being a young outfielder. But Jackson Merrill changes the dynamic of that team significantly. A young lefty bat. Uh, he's been getting on base, which normally that's not not the strength of a young player. He was playing with such high energy. Jerickson Profar is off to a hot start and had the relevant, irrelevant moment from this weekend. We've seen a lot of Jerickson Profar. I'm not sure what the ceiling is on his best year. Um, well, in fact, I could kind of tell you. Uh, Jerickson Profar's best ceiling... You're probably looking at, I mean, 2022 San Diego, where he had 15 homers, a 331 on base. Like, he was a very, he was a solid defender yeah, with kind of an average bat. Yeah, so, so slightly just plus overall plate appearances. And 
Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm going to get lost in jerks and profile. I'm happy for him. I mean, again, the former top prospect that, um, hey, maybe he's got a couple twenty homer seasons in his bag, going back to eighteen, nineteen. So maybe there's a little more in there. But he'll he'll end up with ten years of service. Look at hard hit rates up. He's there. He's there. Um, Jackson Merrill. That's one I want everyone to put in their chamber. If you if you got Jackson Holiday, if you got Jackson Chirio of the Brew Crew. Jackson Merrill has been lumped with them, but lump them in more. Like, no West Coast effect or anything like that. He was just, it was kind of a surprise. Chirio got the extension. Everyone knew Holiday was coming. Everyone was kind of shocked this dude made the Padres. Never mind was their center fielder. Um, and he's, he's electric. So to put that with Tatis, who's looking the part this year. Uh, Manny Machado, who's been DHing a lot because... Uh, he's been dealing with some elbow stuff. Maybe, oh, Gabe, so if you can find me a, some update on Machado's elbow. Yeah, I, I remember I saw something that basically sounded like maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. It's just been, it's he's been DHing primarily, and you think of Manny Machado, you know, the all-time defensive third baseman. Uh, Hassan Kim has looked great defensively at short. Uh, Bogarts hasn't gone yet. Cronenworth has shown them something with the sticks. I'm not ready to buy in fully on the Padres, like I'm going to do kind of in this next segment with a couple teams, because they, I don't know, I, I think they're, again, about to play the Brewers, which I don't like that for them. They've got a tough schedule, it looks like until mid to late May. Um, but I don't know, again, it's one of those, keep your head above water, keep treading, maybe they can get some good juice. If they're around 500 or a little above by mid to late May, the Padres are going to be a big part of this season. And it's just scary because we said that last year and it did not happen. Uh, anything else from Fry Yay? Arenado hit a homer. Him and Goldie have to start going for the Cardinals to get in the mix. Um, I think the big thing, and maybe you think this is lame, and if you're listening to this, you probably don't think this is lame. The intensity and passion guys are playing with from around the league is awesome. It's awesome, man. Um, you know, that that Brewers-Orioles game, you know, there there was a trade in the offseason, but a lot of guys don't care about that. Like, they're just playing another game. The Brewers are playing with some piss and vinegar uh, that maybe they're this year's fight team. That's what Trevor Plouffe was saying on Talking Baseball today. Uh, I don't know, just everywhere they flipped the camera to, and this is a little backhanded slap at my Yankees, who the Yankees have always had an air of professionalism to them. Like, we are the Yankees. We win World Series. We go out and we do our job. You know, not a lot of flash, no facial hair, no long hair. You know the whole deal. Around the, they've leaned into that more, which is kind of tough because you haven't been to a World Series in fourteen years, fifteen years. If this is the fifteenth, Yanks look great, by the way. So let's not do that right now. Yeah. Um, but I think the Yankees have leaned a little too far into the professionalism. Let's not get too crazy. Let's not get too hype. Like I don't know, man. They're there was something Jackson Merrill after he made that dive and catch and he's letting out the let's go and just everywhere else around the league is just a little more hype than the Yankees. And I want that hype. And they're starting yeah. to get there. It's compared to prior Yankee teams, I'm noticing, especially in the new guys, like like Soto gets excited. Soto's an like excited twenty five year old kid who happens to be one of the best ball players ever. Uh, Alex Verdugo has brought some great energy. Stroman has brought some great energy. Uh, and maybe it's a youth thing. Like, a lot of the Yankees teams have been kind of veteran-laden um, that maybe having some really talented young, really talented young baseball players. Uh, Soto is obviously in a different world. Uh, but with Verdugo, and I think that taps more into Volpe, who's looked incredible. I think that taps more into Waldo, who's gone off to a really hot start for the Yankees. We'll see if that keeps up. See if Glaber gets going, what, what he'll but provide there. Man, that young, 
something about young energy is super important to baseball. Obviously, you have to be good on the at the game. That helps too. Give yourself reasons to celebrate. But it, again, last Yankee centric point I'll make. You know, Tommy Canely, who is one of the crazier people in baseball. Like that's kind of his mo. He was he was like the young kooky guy in the bullpen. There was one year he got hurt, and the team talked about how much they missed his energy on road trips and stuff like that. Tommy Canely, in my head on the Yankees, is still middle of the pack, not an old. He's 34. <laughs> he's like one of the four <laughs> oldest Yankees. He's the oldest guy in the bullpen. Uh, he's one of the older Yankees. And I, I guess maybe that's changed now, and maybe I need to change my scope on that. Uh, but there's something to that young energy, and a lot of teams have it. Pittsburgh Pirates, Orioles, Brewers, um, Blue Jays have a lot of youth. The Reds, Royals. I mean, these guys, watching Bobby Witt run, that's just something special to see on a baseball field in general. Let me do uh, the two teams. That Before I you do that, Manny Machado, maybe end of the month, probably sometime in May. Okay. We'll so it's his before. right elbow, right? Yes. He's been playing playing catch and taking grounders on the field before games, but they're they're saying the hope is by the end of the month probably uh probably a May thing. That's interesting. Because right now they've had Tyler Wade and a couple other guys filling in at third. If they could open up that DH slot, could be an interesting deadline move. Uh we've got a lot of time to think about that. Tommy Canely, second oldest Yankee. Crazy. Two teams I'm high on, two teams I'm low on. And it's brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook. NBA fans, playoffs are happening. It's exciting. I'm getting myself excited for it. I know when I turn on the play-in games, I'm going to feel that juice kick in. And right now, speaking of, new customers who bet just $5 on anything We'll get $200 in bonus bets instantly. So download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code BAKERS. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code BAKERS. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code BAKERS only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. All right, the two up teams and the two down teams. I really like what I've seen, and you heard me talking about it a minute ago, the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, And maybe that seems obvious to you, maybe it doesn't. I was locked in on Milwaukee and Baltimore this weekend. Baltimore, Jackson Holiday shirt day. I keep harping on this, and maybe it's old guy Jake kicking in a little bit. Man, giving away a rookie T-shirt before he's had a hit. I know he's, like, a number one prospect, and that gets treated differently. And, like, MLB already promotes him, and we know who his father was. But I don't know. The kid went hitless in Boston, and then he came into Baltimore without a hit. That's a lot of pressure, man. Watching a whole stadium wear shirts with your face on it. His dad sitting there with Cal Ripken Jr. Like, I don't know. A lot of moving parts there. And they end up facing Freddie Peralta, who, you know, for anyone that's got a little little cheese on him for Cy Young, they're feeling pretty good right now. Jolly Olive. Might see him coming up soon on Wake and Jake. Um, Jolly Olive and Foolish Baseball mixing it up online this weekend. Over Freddie Peralta. Huh. So, don't love that. Don't want them getting chummy. Going to bring them together soon. Um, for the Brewers to lay it on them in that game. And then the next game. Day game. Baltimore. The whole, Again, I can't... If you saw it, you understood. The whole feeling in the stadium was bizarre. It was 40,000 people that showed up for a Jackson holiday party that left just watching their team get whooped. Um, And then there was a little fight involved. Cut to the next game, Baltimore. They do Orioles stuff. They put up three in the first against D.L. Hall, who they traded away. Uh, Then it's 4-1, and then Milwaukee punches back, and then they punch back again. 
Milwaukee is up eight to five after four innings. They ruined the party again. Corbin Burns pitches the final game. He survives. The Brewers had a rally going every inning. The reason I am up on the Milwaukee Brewers coming into the season, Milwaukee has, they've earned the credit of the NL Central. They've had a winning record now uh, for the past handful of years. Even in down years, the Milwaukee Brewers, which, you know, when you talk about mid-market teams or teams, you know, without the biggest payroll, you know, if, if Milwaukee had been a, look at the Chicago White Sox right now. Look at the Royals' past history. You know, if you're a central team, <laughs> you can fall out of it quickly. Uh, Milwaukee has constantly been a part of it. Their pitching has always kind of been there. They've tapped into guys. We saw the rise of Corbin Burns. We saw the rise of Woodruff. Woodruff. We're seeing Peralta now uh, kind of take over the staff. Their rotation, on paper, doesn't do a ton for you. But the pitching technology has gotten to such a good place. And I think you guys have probably seen it in your team's bullpen or spot starters. There's not a lot of guys that call get called up that you look at and you're just like, whoa. Like, I don't, this guy shouldn't be pitching in the majors. Pitching depth is there. That's why these Tommy John injuries are happening and, and the league kind of shrugs and moves on because there's more guys throwing. The Brewers have had pitching throughout the years. Right now their starting pitching ERA is ninth, which again, that's, that's pretty good. Um, their bullpen whip is seventh, uh, the least amount of walks allowed out of their bullpen. Couple high-end arms. This is without Devin Williams, who got hurt before the season. And some people thought that might be like, damn, like this Brewers year, no Devin mm. Williams, no Corbin Burns. They're not even going to be able to sell Devin Williams. Uh, here they are. They're off to a 10-4 and four start. And I haven't even talked about the reason why they've changed how I feel about them the most, they are hitting their second in OPS, third in runs scored. It's kind of like a raise from last year feel to them a little bit. Like People like them as a team. You didn't think they were going to hit like this. Something about hitting is contagious. William Contreras has been one of the best hitters in baseball so far, one dot one A Christian Yelich showing a little pop while also getting on base. Uh, Willie Adamas has returned to form, which was huge, and they missed him a little bit last year. Again, it's early. Some of these guys are going to start to fade. Reese Hoskins, who's as steady Eddie as a hitter as it comes, they have their steady guys, which Milwaukee, normally it's just one or two. It's kind of been Yelly and Adamas, and then like Rowdy Telez, or you're hoping for someone to step up. They kind of have four locked-in MLB guys. This is with their top prospect, Jackson. Hmm. This is Bryce Terang has been going nuts, a former first-round pick who's 24, struggled last year. Sal Freelix, 24, uh, was solid last year. He's contributing. Oliver Dunn, sure, pal. Joey Ortiz, who came in the Corbin Burns train. This team is hitting. I think they can play the matchups. They're out of the gates hot. Second in home runs, third in steals. They can hit you in any way right now. The Brewers have changed my outlook for their season with their three weeks. Normally, I don't like playing that game because that just ain't how baseball works. If the Milwaukee Brewers can hit, that's significant. The other team, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not as sold. I'm not, and maybe I'm hurt by the jersey, and I'm hurt a little bit by the division. But I'll put some chips on. I guess if I was going all in on Milwaukee, I'm putting like half half the pot in. Or half of my chips on. The Kansas City Royals. I think the AL Central is wide open. I really do. Um, and the Kansas City Royals are currently doing it on both sides. They are second in starting pitching ERA, first in starting pitching whip. They are ninth in run scores. Sixth in homers, fourth in steals. So you want a little speed? You want a little pop? Okay. Bobby Witt Jr. is a bona fide superstar. We kind of knew that. 
but we didn't know that. He's the truth. Vinny Pasquantino, a friend of the program. He's 26. He had a shoulder injury. When it comes to hitting, wrists, shoulders, elbows, you get nervous about those. He got he had a slow couple games and then he got going. Uh and a reminder, Vinny Pasquantino, and I think Foolish Baseball was telling us this. I think he had Vinny P as a guy who said he could have on his foolish top fifty next year. Like yeah. if he if he lives up to his stats, um, you know, he's got close to as many walks as strikeouts at the major league level. Uh, he can be the lefty impact bat to what Bobby Witt Jr. does. Lineup balance matters. We know this. We've learned this. Big Salvi is Big Salvi. He's off to a hot start. We love that, although he did leave the game at a throw from home. Uh on Sunday's game against the Mets. MJ Melendez, who was a top prospect for them, kind of had two okay MLB seasons, nothing too flashy. Um, He's 25. Like, guys can still get better as they get older. Uh, Sometimes we get that prospect fatigue. Um, He is there along with Michael Garcia, who's 24. So they have a young core. Garcia, Witt Jr., Melendez, Nelson Velasquez. Those are four guys 25 and under. Those guys have shown steps early on that they have the talent to get better. If that core goes within the AL Central, my goodness. Uh, And that's ignoring, it's not ignoring, that's an obnoxious way of me getting to the pitching and telling you Cole Reagan's might be a full blown like star. He's that guy. The there was a I think it was in a passing article that he said Cole Reagan's uh, scouts were saying at spring training that he was a lefty to Grom. I don't know about that, uh, but he's been nasty this year. Fangraphs has him as the sixth best starting pitcher so far. Brady Singer, who's twenty seven, that we've had prospect fatigue on. He has been lights out this year. Uh, and then on the other end of the spectrum, they got their free agent work done. Seth Lugo and Michael Waka, who are both really good for the Padres last year, they have been good. They retooled the bullpen. There's a young core in the lineup. Again, I'm not as in. The Brewers have a history as a team and an organization of success. It looks like a couple things are clicking, especially offensively that you can put that together pretty simply. And I love me some NL Central. I love the Reds. I think the Pirates are fun, too. Uh, are the cart? Like, that whole division is alive. Royals make me a little nervous, and I feel like there's going to be a week I wake up, and if Cole Reagans gets hurt and Garcia or Melinda slows down, it's, it's going to feel a little more Royals-y. But these two teams have changed my outlook for them on the season. Um, and I'm excited for them. The fan bases should be excited. And there were people talking on the Royals front in the off season about how like, look, Yankees, they added exactly what they needed. Soto, Verdu- Soto and Verdugo, they needed lefty hitting outfielders. They got two of the better ones, but the people were saying outside of them, I think the Royals might be sneaky, the most improved. And that was when we thought it was like a, can they flirt with 500? Right. That would have been a, near 20 game improvement um it was what did most improve mean what what did most improve mean and we still have to play that game a bit it's a long season to go but well they've got three versus the white Sox, who their season is flailing out of control really it's just them the marlins and the rockies whose seasons are like kaputs yeah and i don't like using that word um hey if they can handle their business against the white Sox, let's say that's even two out of three they would be 12 and 7. And then they've got a homestand, Baltimore, Toronto. It's after an off day. Rest your pen. That'll be the real test. Because if they can survive that homestand, you've had a good April. It's in the books. Like, with a good April in 500 baseball, you're currently in the playoffs with the expanded wild card. 
Uh, so the fact the Royals have put themselves in that position, and most importantly, I told you two teams I'm up on, Brew Crew and Royals. That means I had to pick two teams I'm down on, and one of them is the Minnesota Twins. I don't know, man. You know what? For those that have been listening, pitching, uh, hitting is the new pitching. What that means is I think if you want to get through the regular season, you got to hit. Look at those Texas Rangers. Look at what the Diamondbacks did in the playoffs. Look at the constant threat the Phillies are, the Braves, the Dodgers, Houston. I mean, sure, a lot of those teams have had pitching as well. But to get through the regular season day in, day out, and just put it on teams and get to their bad bullpen pitchers. There's a formula there to win enough games in the regular season that as long as you're in the dance, that's what you need. And right now in Minnesota, I am worried. 27th in OPS, 30th in batting average. Do you know what that feels like? It feels really bad. We were close to knowing what that feels like. <laughs> watch, and that felt bad. Watch a lot of Yankee ball last year. Saw a lot of stats similar to this. It feels bad. Um, and I don't know. They were banking a lot on Royce Lewis, who's going to be out a while. And he has a bit of an injury history. Carlos Correa just got banged up. A little bit of an injury history. Um, Eddie Julian, year two. They're banking on a lot for him. Hasn't fully gone yet. How about this? I'm just going to read the lineup because this is a team that went from kind of like a sneaky deep roster to I'm just going to read what Fangraphs has as their day in day out lineup. Eddie Julian leadoff, Ryan Jeffers catcher hitting two, Alex Kirilov DHing, Byron Buxton in center, Willie Castro at short, Austin Martin in left field, Matt Walner in right field. Carlos Santana at first, and Kyle Farmer at third. Not many chunks of that lineup that you look at and are like, ooh, that that could be slippery. I don't... It's early. I hope it's wrong. This Twins team got a lot of compliments on their pitching. Their bullpen has still been really good. Uh, The starting pitching... uh, Hasn't been great. Joe Ryan's been good. Bailey Ober just had a good start. Pablo Lopez, fine. Um, People were worried about their starting pitching depth. The bullpen's also getting used a lot early on. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know what truly happened. I guess I was really leaning into Royce Lewis. People were saying Royce Lewis is the best player in the AL Central. Without him who I'm still not fully bought in on. I'm rooting for him. We got to see the full year. He's been hurt a lot. Um, Need to see him play regular season baseball games. Not a ton of guys with regular MLB pedigrees in that Twins lineup right now. Off to the slow start. A little scary. Six and eight start to the season. They can easily have one heater, and this could be in your rear view. I'm going to need to see them hit a lot. And I'm not seeing a lot of guys in the lineup that have hit a lot. Yeah. Last last handful of games, we're approaching like a week of good ball from Eddie Julian. That Like, okay, you get if you can start really getting going, he's the type of guy that I think hitting would be contagious for others, but I mean, not, I mean, a, lot, not a lot happening. Correa he, was off to a pretty nice start. Eddie hurt. Julian's an on-base guy. Like, that's supposed to be his calling card. So let's say Eddie Julian even, he's getting on base, 380 clip, figuring it out, boom. You know, Ryan Jeffers, I know he's had some heaters before, and Kirilov, Buxton, Willie Castro, Austin Martin, Matt. I don't know. Minnesota fans are worried, and I I think if we're being honest, Trevor Plouffe, Trevor Plouffe usually, you know, played for the Twins, works for the Twins. He's usually pretty gung ho about what's going on. Right now, he he is not gung ho. Uh, the last and second team. Again, the offense has been struggling, and I did not plan this as I wear my Seattle John Boy Media All Star jersey. Seattle Mariners. It's a lot of the same. 
I hope it's just three weeks to start the season, but they are 28th in batting average, 28th in OPS, 27th in run scored, not homering or stealing bases. Julio is off to another slow start. Third straight year. I love him. He's one of baseball's best when he's right. Handsome. Covers ground defensively. Right now, he ain't hitting a lick, and kind of nobody is. Um, so J.P. Crawford, who had an awesome year last year, got on base a ton. Need him to do that. But then even if he starts doing that, Julio and Jorge Polanco, who is one of their big ads, haven't been doing it. Those guys are going to kick in at some point. They will, and that'll help out a lot. Uh, but Ty France... Mitch Haniger, who's actually maybe been their best offensive player, but he's got a big injury history. And then, I'm not... Hmm. They signed Mitch Garver to be their DH. And Mitch Garver was hitting third for the Texas Rangers when they won the World Series. Mitch Garver hit a lot last year. But I think it was only 80-something games. And Mitch Garver's a guy with an injury history... That their plan was they were going to DH him. He'd spend a lot of time catching. We'll DH him. That'll keep him healthy. He's off to a cold start. He's 33 years old. It definitely felt like a value play in free agency instead of a J.D. Martinez, uh, who ended up signing with the Mets. Uh, Jock Peterson was out there. It's not over. I'm not putting a signing fully down after three weeks. The bottom of their lineup right now, Luke Rayley and Josh Rojas. I guess I guess my formula that's gotten me to this point. Mariners are kind of built on pitching. Castillo, Kirby, Gilbert, Bryce Miller, and Bryce Miller has been really good. Um, and they're going to throw the pill. At some point, they need the hitting to kick in. Uh, I know in about a week, they take a road trip to Colorado. And maybe that sparks everything. And we can look at it in a month and be like, hey, Seattle's starting to hit. Here we go. We're back. Um, But in that AL West, I sold some Rangers stock to start the season. I regret that because I think they can just bang. They're going to win some games because they're going to go up 6-0 after the fourth. Uh, Angels, not in on, but... Who knows what they'll be? Maybe they'll be pesky. The A's have just won three straight series, which the Mariners haven't won one. Mm. And then there's one team below Seattle. It's the Houston Astros, and I ain't ready to sell on them. I've seen what they've done. So, I don't know. With that outlook for the Mariners, it's a little scary. It's a little scary. It's a team I've been rooting for. Their window, and they made moves. They went out and got Luis Castillo. Um, These lineups got to go. If you're not hitting, that scares me a lot in today's baseball. Um, And, man, that Twins lineup on paper, a little more daunting than I thought it was going to be. So some way too early, two up, two down, and around the league. Uh, If you watch the Masters, you're welcome. It's one of the best events in sports. Uh, Pretty crazy that everyone kind of knew what was going to happen, and then it happened. Uh, Scotty Scheffler won it again. He is crazy. I I don't want to say he's in Tiger territory, but there hasn't been a lot of times that you can kind of pencil in the winner, and Scotty is in that territory. I'm in a one-and-done fantasy golf league that I've come to really enjoy. If you are a loose golf fan, I recommend you do it. Because it makes you, for 10 minutes before the tourney, just tune in to think, okay, who do I like? Uh, And then you learn a little bit about the tourney. You learn a little bit about the golfers. And it can really add to your experience. Uh, Masters is a fantastic watch. I daydream more and more about actually getting down there one day. I saw Rip Hamilton went for the first time. Mm. Got jealous of his Insta stories. Um, Scotty Scheffler, baby on the way, said he was going to bail if wife went into labor. Uh, Apparently, she did not. Um, So, Scotty gets a master's, and he'll have a kid in the next couple days. Not a bad week. Um, Really fun watch. Watching the pressure uh, of these guys look over some of the toughest golf holes 
uh, in the world. It, it, it really is a great watch. I, I guess I can understand if you don't have an appreciation for golf and if it looks slow. I, it's supposed to be kind of a relaxing, chill watch. Um, I guess unless you're rooting for a player hardcore, if you got a little cheese on, on some of the action. Because, uh, man, these you can see pressure kick in. Uh, and it's usually cool to watch. There's a couple sad moments in golf where you see someone actually break down and you're like, oh, I don't love that. Um, but watching, watching some of the guys step up, and that's where Scotty is just amazing. He's got the same emotion on his face all the time. All the time. Um, and congrats to our guy Ludwig Aberg for finishing second. Why not? Golf is sneaky, awesome international sport. Let's see, going down this leaderboard. I've got USA, Sweden, England, Australia, France, Sepp Straka. What is is that, Austria? South Korea, Finland, uh, Chile. I see a Joachim Neiman. Ireland, uh, Vijegas. Tie 35th, Columbia, I think. Canada, Ireland. Um, if you're not into it, I get it. If you're half into it, keep dipping the toe. Golf is a good time. Uh, and the other bigger thing that is about to kick in, and you heard it with DraftKings, the NBA playoffs are kicking off. I'm, um, I like the NBA product. I'll be honest, I, I listen to, you guys know, I listen to some Simmons or Cillo. That's kind of where I get caught up on the NBA because I really respect those guys' opinions. Uh, and then I watch. If, if there's a weeknight and there's nothing else on, I'll, I'll, I'll have an NBA game on. For me, it's kind of a buffer between the start of the MLB season, the last two and a half, three weeks, where up until that point, a lot of basketball has already been decided. There's one or two playoff teams that are going to sort off. And their argument would be, up until the last day of the season, there was a ton of seeding stuff that happened every day. Uh, it was almost overwhelming for me. Like the, the Magic were the three seed a week ago. I think they, they barely hang on to avoid the play-in. Right. Like, so, there was some sliding this year. I, I won't knock it. I, I think if I was... If we lived in NBA pod only, I would I would love all that. Love all that drama. Uh, for me, NBA has become like a playoff. Let's get lost in it. And uh, Tuesday night, we get some fun plans. L.A. and New Orleans will play in to be the seventh seed. There's some rumors <laughs> uh, that L.A. could potentially not be all in on that game because the winner of that game goes on to face the Nuggets. Um, Lakers at New Orleans I still have a little bit of Zion stock uh, And I know he had his low moment During the the in-season tournament this year Since then he's kind of turned it on And he's such a fun watch uh, Interesting Like I'm going to watch that Tuesday night that's a ton of fun LeBron, Zion on the same court Winner kind of moves on or winner does move on to a full playoff series and pay, faces the defending champion Nuggets that fell out on the one seed because mm-hmm. uh, because they blew a game a Wemby game Wemby went nuts on them a couple days ago uh, Golden State sacked o late losers out so rude Golden State's the favorite in Sacramento I don't know I mean ever. I, when I say this, I get in trouble because I say everyone's rooting Golden State. I forget that there's a lot of Golden State haters out there because if you win a lot, people will hate you. That every, every now and then I'll just get caught up in a Curry game and I'll be like, how could you not love this guy? And then the teens kick in and they're like, what? Love Curry? I hate Curry. Like, what voice is that? Um, yeah, if you're a script writer, you'd love to get another Golden State LA game for the eight seed. Because uh, that was the NBA game of the season, the Lakers-Golden uh, State game a few months back. And the winner of that gets to face the young OKC team that got the one seed in the West. That's so impressive. But if the Lakers or Golden State end up in that eight seed, there's going to be a lot of action on those teams. 
Miami and the 76ers uh, are doing the 7th, 8th place seeding game. Philly, a favor in that one. Um, and then Atlanta, Chicago. I had our guy Zoe telling me that the Bulls are pesky. You don't want them. Okay. I'll, I'll believe that when I see it. Uh, I'll be honest. After watching Trey Young just do Trey Young things in playoff games, I know how much that can suck to be on the other side. Um, but I was told the Bulls are pesky, so we'll see. Uh, and then when's the first full night of playoffs? So Saturday is a Saturday's full day. Like Friday day. we'll have games. Or no, that's just the final play-in games. So I think Saturday, Saturday's Sunday. the day. Okay. So, hey, uh, this is where the NBA does win. Um, Phoenix, Minnesota is going to be awesome. Phoenix has turned it on a notch that people were worried they didn't have. Bradley Beal has started to go. The T-Wolves have been so good this year. And Carl Anthony Towns is coming back for the playoffs. And Anthony Edwards, is this going to be his moment? Uh, it's where the NBA has star power and fun matchups. I think the the one in the West, Dallas at the Clippers, Luka, Kawhi, Paul George. Um, I mean, it provides must-watch television. And I, the second round of the playoffs might be the best thing they have going. Because, you know, if we want to be rude... You know, maybe Indiana gets knocked out. Whoever Boston plays gets knocked out. Whoever Denver plays probably gets knocked out. I think the crop of teams left for the second playoff series in the NBA. Every night's going to be must-watch. So we're hitting a a good sports apocalypse or sports eclipse. Mm. Basketball is the moon. Baseball is the sun. I don't know. I still haven't figured all that out. What I did figure out is we had some fun today. Thank you, guys. We will be back on Wednesday. We'll see what the sports world brings for us. Uh, Thank you, guys. Subscribe.